This LOS is explain the NPV profile, compare the NPV and IRR methods when evaluating independent and mutually exclusive projects, and describe the problems associated with each of the evaluation methods. Okay, we're gonna start this um, LOS by looking first at the NPV profile. So you can see here on the y-axis, we've got the net present value. And it goes from negative net present value up to uh, positive. And on the x-axis, we've got the discount rate starting from zero, no discounting, up to uh, plus 30%, okay? So remember, this is for a conventional cash flows where there's initial negative cash outflow uh, followed by subsequent positive uh, outflows. We saw in a previous LOS a question where following non-conventional cash flows, we had that big negative cash flow in year two, and in fact, it was the higher discount rate that gave us the positive net present value. So just remember, you have to keep in mind that this is conventional cash flows, okay? So what this is saying, there's three interesting points. The first one is here, where there's no discounting. We can see this would just be the initial uh, cash outflow plus the positive inflows, but we're not discounting those positive inflows in the future, and it would just be under uh, 35, and this is in dollars, don't forget, NPV is in dollars. This would be just under 35 uh, million, say, if, the, if it scales in millions. Then the second point here is where, if we're using a discount rate of 10%, for example, what is the net present value? We could say, well, at a discount rate of 10%, we have a net present value of 13.136 million. We can see it's under the 15, that is 13 0.136, okay? The next point would be where the discount rate net makes the net present value equals to zero, which is here, and that would be our internal rate of return. So if I just draw that down, you could see it's somewhere under uh, 20%, perhaps that's 18%, that would be our IRR, okay? Basic principles of capital budgeting. So in this slide, we're just gonna look at a bit of a summary of some of the uh, key concepts. So number one, the capital budgeting decision rules are to invest if the net present value is greater than zero or if the IRR is greater than the required rate of return or if the profitability index is greater than one. There are no decision rules for the payback period, the discounted payback period, and the average accounting rate of return because they are not always sound measures. So just remember the average accounting rate of return equals the average net income divided by the average book value, okay? Uh, that's just a quick reminder on what that AAR is. It's the average accounting rate of return. For mutually exclusive projects that are ranked differently by NPV and IRR, it is economically sound to choose the project with the higher NPV, okay? So you've got mutually ex exclusive projects, they're ranked differently, you choose the project with the higher RR. The multiple IRR problem and the no IRR problem can arise for a project with non-conventional cash flows. Again, you need to be careful when there's non-conventional cash flows because you can get more than one IRR or you can get no IRR, okay? So cash flows that change signs more than once during the project's life is the definition of non-conventional cash flows. The fact that projects with positive NPV theoretically increase the value of the company and the value of its stock could explain the popularity of net present value as an evaluation method. So now we're looking at ranking conflicts between NPV and IRR. So we've got two projects here, Project X and Project Y. So if we look at Project X, it has an NPV of 2000, but it has an IRR of uh, 7%, okay? And project Y has got the net present value of 1700, which is lower net present value, but it has the higher IRR of 16%. So you can see Y has a higher RR than X. Uh, but which project would you choose? In this case, when there's a conflict between the IRR and NPV, you would choose the project with the higher net present value. So you would choose project X. So a quick practice question to help consolidate our understanding. In that previous slide, we saw a crossover rate, but we didn't talk about it. Uh, so I wanted to put in a question here. With regard to the net present value profiles of two projects, the crossover rate is best described as the discount rate at which A, two projects have the same NPV, B, 
two projects have the same internal rate of return, or C, a project's net present value changes from positive to negative. Okay, the correct answer is A, the crossover rate is best described as the discount rate at which two projects have the same net present value. The cro um, <clears throat> it is the only point where the net present values of the two projects are the same. So I just went back to that slide. So we can see here again, the crossover rate is right here. So if I draw a line to the left-hand side, we can see that the NPV for project X equals the NPV for project Y at the crossover. And it's the only time where the net present values are the same. Okay, so that was a nice little question with regards to the crossover rate. Another quick little practice question. With regards to net present value profiles, the point at which a profile crosses the vertical axis is best described as A, the point at which two projects have the same NPV, B, the sum of the undiscounted cash flows from a project, or C, a project's internal rate of return when the project's NPV is equal to zero. Okay, the correct answer here is B. With regards to net present value profiles, the point at which a profile crosses the vertical axis is best described as the sum of the undiscounted cash flows from a project. So we've seen that before. This is the y-axis, and this is NPV, and it's in dollars, and you can see that's with a discount rate of zero, so we call that, that's the undiscounted cash flows. On the x-axis, we have the discount rates starting from zero and increasing, so uh, when we're talking about the vertical axis, the correct answer is B. It's the sum of the undiscounted cash flows from a project. As we increase the discount rate, we start to discount the cash flows and we reduce the net present value when we're looking at traditional cash flows. So another quick question. With regards to net present value profiles, the point at which a profile crosses the horizontal axis is best described as A, the point at which two projects have the same NPV, B, the sum of the undiscounted cash flows from a project, or C, a project's internal rate of return when the NPV is equal to zero. Okay, this is a nice little question. So remember, on the y-axis, we've got the NPV, and it's in dollars. And on the x-axis, we have the discount rate starting from zero. So again, the point, if we're looking at an NPV profile, the point here on the y-axis is the sum of the uh, undiscounted cash flows, okay? Here we have the x-axis, and again, we can have uh, NPV projects that go below zero, but when we're looking at the x-axis, where it crosses that line, we have an NPV of zero, and that, by definition, is the IRR. We've seen that before. Uh, the IRR equals the discount rate, okay? that makes the NPV equal to zero, okay? I'm just gonna finish this LOS by showing the importance of flipping through the uh, CFA curriculum and looking at all the examples in the blue box. So again, just to and help to consolidate a bit of our understanding. So here we can see example number four is the ranking conflict due to differing cash flow patterns. So we have project A, we have project B, We've got some cash flows here. Project A is, they're both negative uh, 200. So they have the same initial outflow, but uh, project one has got uh, positive cash flows of 80 each year for four years, but project B doesn't have a payback until 400 uh, in year four. So you can see we have a higher net pro, uh, present value in project B, but we have a lower internal rate of return. So it says here, if the two projects were not mutually exclusive, you would invest in both because they're both profitable. However, you can choose either A or B, which has the higher NPV, okay? So you would, in this case, you would choose uh, project B because it has the higher net present value. Okay, one of the things I wanted to show you that in the text too, you can also highlight. So when you're going back to review, it's important. So in this case here, I highlighted a few things and it brought up one of the one, uh, one little issue is that uh, whenever the NPV and IRR rank two mutually exclusive projects differently, as they do in the example that we just saw, you should choose the project based on the NPV. Project B with the higher NPV is the better project because of the reinvestment assumption. So there's a reinvestment assumption here that mathematically, 
Whenever you discount a cash flow at a particular discount rate, you're implicitly assuming that you can reinvest the cash flow at the same discount rate. Okay, so again, that's the importance of going through not only the slides and practice questions, but then scanning through the examples and highlighting and reading some of the finer, more subtle points, because you can guarantee there'll be a question on the exam that is based on some of the more subtle points throughout the text. So we're just going to finish this LOS just by, again, I wanted to encourage candidates to go to the back of the text and do all the practice questions and look at the solutions because they're required for the uh, CFA curriculum. So this one, I just wanted to look at question number nine here. It's a funny one. There's no math, but it just it makes you kind of think, aha, what's going on? So Aaron Chow is reviewing a profitable investment that has a conventional cash flow pattern. If the cash flows for the project initial outlay and future after tax cash flows all double, Chow would predict that the IRR would A, increase and the NPV would increase, or B, stay the same and the NPV would increase, or C, stay the same and the NPV would stay the same. Okay, the correct answer to that is uh, B. So B is correct and we can highlight. That's what I said, it's nice to use the uh, highlighting functionality. So we can just, uh, we can uh, shift and, and highlight that. We can add the highlight and there we go. So B is correct. The IRR would stay the same because both the initial outlay and the after tax cash flow uh, double so that the return on each dollar invested remains the same. All of the cash flows and their present values double. The difference between total present value of the future cash flows and the initial outlay also doubles. So I just wanted to show that's kind of a neat little question and the importance of going back. And uh, once you've seen it once, uh, that's fine. But when you see it for the first time, you might think, aha, I don't know the answer. You might get it wrong. Uh, review the questions and solutions at the back of each reading. And that's the last for this LOS. Thank you.